Hey guys, another follow up video on our Fish Spotlight series. Today we're talking about Celestictes chopre or the Glow Light Danube. Very, very cool little fish. Uh, we're going to start by just covering a few points about the origin. It comes from actually northern Myanmar, which was formerly known or formerly called Burma. Uh, it's actually an interesting uh, country. It's the most northwestern country in southeast uh, Asia. So it's got some interesting uh, geographical facts about it. Um, these fish actually originate from a more of a temperate setting. Uh, they come from streams that are relatively quickly moving, uh, some kind of rocky uh, gravel type substrate, and there are also some quiet patches, um, eddies and pools as well located in the streams. Aquatic plants are not really a big factor, in the, especially in the streams. Uh, one thing that is a factor is in fact uh, the oxygen level. So these fish are really uh, have evolved in a fairly higher or a fairly high oxygen level content and uh, because of the movement because of the temperate conditions the dissolved oxygen level is a little higher so that does play a factor in making them feel comfortable in your aquarium so that covers the origins now let's get into the behavior of the actual fish itself now it's an it's an active species it's a species that likes to swim quite freely back and forth so that impacts the size of the aquarium you should be keeping them in um, we suggest an aquarium of really a minimum of 75 uh, centimeters by 30 centimeters or 30 by 12 inches and uh, they can be a little bit territorial males especially so having a couple of females per male is a good idea as well it helps to subdue that um, as I said the plants are not really a factor in their natural environment but there really isn't a better fish for a planted aquarium uh, it helps make them feel a little bit more comfortable and it's really going to demonstrate the colors to you uh, at a far better level when they have a nice plant backdrop. So great fish for a planted tank, it's also good as a community fish, mixes really well with other small daniels, rasboras, uh, mini small loaches are a good uh, thing as well, the rasbora group, uh, even door cichlids could be kept with them as well. Um, shrimp too, actually a good, uh, a good fish to keep with shrimp as well. Uh, to, to differentiate male from females um, when they're relatively well fed you can see that the males are a little bit slimmer like in all daniels and the females tend to be a little bit bulkier a little bit fuller in body um, and as I said they do like to swim back and forth longitudinally through the tank that is important they school nicely so one of the things you should be doing is organizing so that you have a current going from one side or one narrow end of the tank to the other that helps support that natural swimming behavior so on the topics of water conditions and feeding a couple of important points you want to make note of this species is not fussy uh, they are a fish that likes to have the top tier our top third of the aquarium so uh, they and they are more predisposed to being a surface feeder so uh, small granules for example like flu valve bug bites microgranules fabulous food for them um, smaller frozen foods like uh, you know brine shrimp or baby brine shrimp even uh, frozen daphnia smaller mosquito larvae smaller freeze-dried foods uh, those are all great flake foods all good foods for them give them a varied diet they're an active busy fish so uh, a couple small feedings a day is really the best way to go about feeding them um, and as far as competitiveness when it comes to feeding they are a rapid feeder so the fish you're keeping them with you're keeping with them really should have a similar type of feeding pattern it becomes difficult when you have slower uh, not so competitive feeding species for example uh, water conditions should be um, they tolerate quite a bit it's actually 6.5 to 7.5 in terms of pH actually and as far as carbon and hardness is concerned it's about 20 to 200 it's very wide, uh, wide ranging in uh, parts per million so uh, yeah it's not really a big challenge to provide them with water conditions although you want good water movement good filtration to give them a good oxygen level when it comes to breeding well usually that calls for a little bit more acidic softer water so a little bit more towards those ranges when it comes to to breeding them uh, when it comes to temperature ranges they do like a more temperate water condition so uh, or water temperature so you want to really be more between the range of 76 to 78 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or something like 25 to 27 degrees Celsius uh, that's a good temperature for for maintaining them so that's it on the glow light Daniel guys uh, in summary it's a great community fish very colorful 
lovely color pattern on it, makes for a great community fish, fast moving, pay attention to the uh, filtration to give it the right oxygen levels it needs. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the uh, upcoming videos we have on different species that we're going to be showing over the next few weeks. And most of all, please comment below. We'd love to answer any questions you may have.